The United States Department of Agriculture National Veterinary Service Laboratory has confirmed the detection of high path avian influenza in a commercial flock in Fulton County, Kentucky. On Friday evening, uh, the veterinarian from the facility in Fulton County contacted us about a high death rate in their production facility and the birds were having decreased water consumption and they also um, had some respiratory signs. Those signs are consistent with avian influenza so we asked the producers and the veterinarian to make sure that they could take samples and submit them to the Breathitt Laboratory in Western Kentucky. That is our state laboratory for surveillance. The state laboratory ran the preliminary testing and found that they were positive or non-negative as we call it and submitted it to the National Veterinary Service Laboratory for additional testing. The National Veterinary Service Laboratory did confirm high path avian influenza. Avian influenza is a virus that affects poultry. It can also be found in any of our migratory water birds or waterfowl. So it has an effect on the respiratory system and production of our production poultry. So it does cause respiratory signs as well as it can cause mortality when you have certain strains of avian influenza. Avian influenza does not pose a food safety risk. Poultry, poultry products, and eggs are safe to eat when cooked properly. There have been no human cases of avian influenza in the United States. We're working closely with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on our joint response. And what we have done so far is on that Fulton County premises, we have issued a quarantine so that no animals, birds, anything goes on or off the property. We've increased our surveillance in a 10 kilometer area around the infected premises. So we are looking for other birds in the area to test so that we can have surveillance to see if any other premises are affected. We've created an incident management team for our folks from the state of Kentucky, our federal folks, and we are joined with Tennessee as this premises is located on the Tennessee-Kentucky line. The clinical signs that you're going to see in your bird if they are affected with high path avian influenza is going to be decreased feed consumption, decreased water consumption, respiratory signs, and mortality in your birds. This is a highly pathogenic strain of avian influenza that affects poultry. It's highly contagious and spread very easily. It is deadly to birds, so it's important to identify birds that are sick early so that we can contain the virus. We don't know how long this will go on. It all depends on what additional virus we find in the environment and other facilities. So we will continue to do our surveillance to ensure that we identify the virus that's out there so that it can be contained and controlled. So this virus can affect any bird, whether it's a backyard bird or commercial operations. So any birds that are in contact with migratory waterfowl or you know, any water birds. So if your poultry, your backyard chicken goes out and has uh, interactions with wild birds, there's a potential for spread of that virus. So everyone has to make sure that their birds are protected by limiting their exposure to the wild bird population. And anybody that sees sick birds should report those sick birds to the sick bird hotline. The number is 1-866-536-7593. Poultry owners should protect their birds. And how do they protect their birds? They limit their birds' contact with wildlife or wild migratory birds as those birds will have the virus and could be sharing that virus. They should also not share equipment from one bird operation to another bird operation unless they clean and disinfect it in between. 
Additionally, they should watch their birds or observe them for any clinical signs of disease, any decrease in feed consumption, any decrease in water consumption, any respiratory signs, or just a poor doing bird should be reported to your veterinarian or you shall contact the sick bird hotline. Our team has experienced low path avian influenza back in 2017. However, we have not had a detection of this strain, which is the high path avian influenza. However, in 2015, there were many cases of high path avian influenza across the United States. I would encourage folks to visit our Kentucky website, which is kyagr.com slash HPAI for more information on our high path avian influenza incident. We will be posting updates to that website, so please keep informed and you can also get great biosecurity and disease information.